All right, and we are live. <laughs> Camera working, things functioning. The smoothest I've had uh, in, a while. in a while of technological experience. So thank you, Paul, as always, for being here, my wonderful moderator. And um, hi, Paul. Yes. So hello to everyone who's joining the chat. I hope you all are having a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, here we are, May 18th. So we're, we're getting real close to summer. And, um, and so as if, you've, if this is your first time here, welcome. I've got my friend Florinda here, who is the painter Flo, who is an amazing studio painter for, <clears throat> for at least our channel and for like all of her personal projects. We've got her Necron dude here on the um, turntable. So you can kind of see some of her fancy work with what non-metallic metals, basically. Non-metallic. Yeah, non-metallic paints to me. Non-metallic metallic paint job. There we go. Non-metallic metallic. <laughs> I'm like, how do I word this? What was it again? <laughs> so hello to Shale. Thank you for joining the chat. Thomas, thank you for joining the chat. I apologize for any outside noises you hear. We're working on that. Um, so tonight's chat, we, uh, so for those of you who haven't necessarily been following and, and listening to me go on and on about it, but I'm in a movie and that's getting filmed next week, literally a week from today, in fact. So we head out to LA next week and, and we're gonna be gone for like that whole time. So that's really, like one, it's super exciting and I get to be in this and I've already had kind of had all of that. Like I've gone on about all that, but we're still gamers. I'm still a gamer. And, um, and so one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight as a general chat and get your input on was traveling with our miniatures. Uh, obviously we've already had some conventions, um, you know, Genghis Khan, we've had LVO, we've had Adepticon, all happen this year, uh, and more to come. We've got Gen Con coming up, we've got Nova, we've got, you know, probably one of the PAXs. A bunch of conventions basically coming up. So, uh, so I figured we'd tonight talk about, like, how you pack, how you pack up your miniatures, how you choose what miniatures are going, and, you know, depending on how you travel. So we're gonna be driving, so we can kind of get away with a lot more, in my, in my opinion, as far as any miniatures to bring. It's just gonna come down to like what miniatures we wanna choose to bring, uh, which is kind of based on how much time I think I'm gonna have for anything. <laughs> so we'll see. So that's kind of like what I'm thinking about uh, as far as tonight's topic. And I also pulled up some websites um, as far as like places that sell carrying cases, because I didn't know what all was your favorites or what all you use. If you make your own, if you are a big like battle foam or table war or care multi case fan, all of those. So, inquiring minds want to know. Hey, Jeremy, welcome to the chat, man. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Revic, welcome. Evening, Miranda. Hi, Flo. Hi, Paul, and everyone else. Playing Riot Quest at Gen Con, nice. So Riot Quest seems like it doesn't actually require all that many miniatures. So theoretically, you could have a pretty small case to carry around with you for that. Um, and I also, I don't know if it actually requires much in the way of other, I'm sure there's tokens. I know there's like their proprietary dice, but is there really a lot to carry other than the miniatures? And they're only gonna be so big, so. Uh, typically for us, we've been pretty ba well. We have a we have a range, but we've used a lot of the battle foam cases primarily. Um, they've been super good. They're they're easy to they're easy enough to carry onto an airplane, um, even with their general sized case. We've been able to get it onto like overhead as a carry on because obviously it's my carry on. I've never tried to check a miniature's bag. I I don't know that I'd have the bravery to try that. I wonder if you have to <clears throat> do that if you play 40K, because there's bigger vehicles and stuff, like they probably wouldn't fit in the same size bag. So well, that, so that begs the question though, of like how many minis are you bringing with you? So if you're going to a 40K grand tournament, you need two 
2,000 point lists, or at least, I'm, I don't know if you just need the one or not, but I mean, that's a significant size army and you want at least some reasonable amount of options to change out. Um, and yeah, you, you're right, you've got your vehicles, you've got flyers, you might have titans, um, in addition to all your infantry, so do all those get carried? I mean, here in Albuquerque, most everybody carried their 40K stuff in like Rubbermaid cases. And you just walk around with them like a tray. But that's not gonna do in an, on an airplane. Let's see here, Paul. To take my kill team around, I, I use a toolbox with those compartments you can change the size of. One compartment fits one mini nicely and they don't get knocked about at all. Hey, Maxicorn, appreciate you staying here, but certainly understand if you need to uh, head out. Um, yeah, those are, those are pretty nice, Paul. The only problem is they're not really padded, so it's fine for like a little plastic miniature, but I'm thinking like an Infinity model or a Malifaux model, and those incredibly like <laughs> delicate, let's say, uh, designs that they hear. transport very well. Yeah. Shale, I use a Table War magnetic case. I just upgraded the drawer with a dice token organizer. I have two cases, one small for battle tech, low model count, and one big for worm hordes uh, and Star Wars Legion. Yeah, so I know um, Doug at Table War has a bunch of the, the Table War tower cases, I think is what they're called. And they're pretty price equivalent to, to the battle foam stuff. But since they're magnetized cases, you have more of a display feature. So you're just carrying them around and they're, they're standing, like they're magnetized down to the, to the shelf they're on and theoretically not moving or sliding around. It's really great. However, question for you, Shad, because you've got worm hordes, like do you have any of the old metal war, war beasts or worm? Um, war jacks because I feel like those would be too heavy for those magnets is that not the case because it seems like that works really really well for plastic and resin and metal seems less exciting I don't know <clears throat> with kill team of course I have no vehicles or anything larger than a space marine to take robotic dragon battle foam 100% battle foam has been really good battle there's the different there's the different options, right? Now, Kara Multicase should probably get mentioned in there because they're the ones I know of who, who give a lot of uh, economic options for you because you can, you can get like even a cardboard one because they give you the foam trays. And I know there are some people who, who say the foam is better. I don't know, that's just gonna be a taste thing. So you've got that. If you're gonna transport minis at all, eventually, once you get a case, you really don't go back. It's really nice having a case. Uh, Battle Foam's got a ton of options. They have the really cool backpack option. Of course, they've got their big, like kind of square cases for holding at least all of my Warm Horde stuff. And I've got three of those Battle Foam cases, like two of the big square ones you hold and a backpack, and I can fill all of that. <laughs> I still have more minis. So it's like, obviously, if I was gonna go to a convention, I don't know that I would take all of those. So it'd be a matter of like parring down the list. So knowing, say you only have one case, which is probably reasonable, like a lot of people are only gonna have the one to start, especially if you aren't necessarily hitting the convention circuit so much. Like, how do you pick what's going in there? Especially if you haven't signed up specifically for a tournament, because obviously your tournament list is gonna be in there. But like, what if you just wanna play some casual games? Or what if you want to try new games? Or what if you're planning to assemble miniatures while you're at the convention to try and play? Mm. Excuse me. So, Paul, oh, once I did have to transport two lictors, they went in a small fallout metal lunch box with bubble wrap. Rare occasion I take them. Fair enough. And there's absolutely that option, like toolboxes, lunch pails, those who remember those, or have access to those. Um, still around. Those little bits box, like 
I guess kind of like a toolbox where you have like the little craft boxes with the movable movable dividers. Um, those are all pretty good. And then you can get like those, um, what are they like, cabinet liners? It's sort of like that soft paper that you can put down uh, in cabinets that have a grip to them. And so you could kind of lay that down as a degree of padding. So we've done a lot of that stuff, but. Let's see, shale, most of my circle of boros are metal. I have some redonkulous magnets that keep them in place very well. For bigger, heavier models, I use multiple magnets as far from the center of the base as I can to avoid torque issues with it being you know, spinning. <clears throat> Old Witch has eight magnets on her base and she stays firmly in place. Oh wow, she sits in the case? Oh man, that's, I mean, that's definitely beautiful. You're like walking around with this just like display case of beautiful models. Let's see, Robotic Dragon, Atta B, Atta B. I have four of the square battle foam bags, the zip on, the zip on half piece, then the large bottom piece with the wheels. These just wound up being great deals on sale days. Okay. And you can always change out the foam or get more foam and change out what's in the bag. Because one of the things I've noticed that's become more desirable is to just have extra foam trays and the minis just live in the foam trays, assuming you're not doing the display case thing. Because if you're doing display case, like that's kind of a different thing. Um, Flo, you've got some of those tower cases, or you've got, you've got the tray. Yes, the, I don't have the... The table or mag magnetized tray. So that's been pretty cool, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty nice. It made it easier to transport things before DJ got these new cases. That Cases. Do you have any idea what the name of his cases are? Um, Since we're just talking on the topic of cases. <laughs> Super generic blank nope. that. <laughs> nope, All right. Got no name on it. It's just from Hobby Lobby. Oh, okay. So those are pretty fun too. And so as yeah. long as you magnetize the models, you've got... Well, it's not magnetized to begin with. He actually gets like metal strips and cuts them down. Oh, I see. So you have to add that to yes. this. Mm. Good to know, good to know. And then he paints the metal strip? He spray paint it or something? So it's black? I think, I think he uh, primed it black, yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, what does he glue it in with? I'm, I'm never there for that process. Oh, okay. Plus you can make your own custom trays, which yeah, you can certainly do. I think one of the nice thing about something like Battle Foam KR, probably Table War, although I don't know how Table War's case works on an airplane, um, is that they've already kind of covered your airline specs for carry-on. And they've generally kind of maximized the dimensions as much as they can to be able to put it into a carry-on. So there's nothing stopping you from doing that because you can get the measurements from TSA. There's just some extra thing to keep in mind. Like you pay for the convenience, right? So Andrew. You could buy a $400 Pelican case with plug foam. Could buy a Pelican case. That's a... Uh, Turns out I know people who've done that, not just for their camera equipment. Let's see, Andrew, my tip is that if you have no friends, you have no reason to go nowhere. That's not true, because you still go to conventions and you can still play in tournaments against people who are not your friend. I met lots of crazy, I met lots and lots of people playing the tournament scene at Adepticon um, between the 40K doubles and the War Machine tournaments back in the days when they had hardcore. Um, I don't know, like, there are fun people, but I, I like the tournament, like, crew of people generally, like, there's always going to be some people, but you get such a variety as opposed to, you know, you get used to your local game store, and if you get along with the people there, that's super awesome, um, if it's, like, very mixed for you, then getting out and playing other people is probably ideal. Uh, Robot Dragon, true extra foam tray 
It's a very good idea. I plan to go with moving forward. Well, yeah, so if you just have miniatures that you keep in the foam trays, then you don't have to remove the miniatures to replace them with the ones that you need to carry around your case. You would just switch out the trays, which is infinitely faster. And Battle Foam does have a very good selection of foam trays, the laser cut trays. They've um, established a lot of relationships with game companies to, to set up, um, you know, to get the laser cut outlines to put into their trays. So they've got like a cool setup. And comparatively, like Table Wars stuff, you don't have to worry about any of any of the exact fit because you're just magnetizing to the case and it doesn't matter what size you have. So again, it's just a matter of taste. And then back to the care multi-case because I know a lot of people would run around with those and they honestly seem pretty, pretty legit. Like you can get a case for like 50 bucks, whereas like Battle Foam and Table War are closer to 200. So, I mean, it's a significant enough difference. Let's see, Shale in Phoenix, foam trays have a big issue with the glue melting in the heat and the tray falling apart. Then you have this nasty glue gunk gets stuck to your mini bases. Ooh. Well, I suppose that was also a risk if you just kept it in a hot car, right? Why would you keep your minis in a hot car? You should never keep your minis in a hot car. Why would you do that? Well, you forget. <laughs> Maybe. Unless you have metal minis. Unless you have metal minis, maybe. But I could see that foam tray thing being an issue still. Like, you gotta worry about the heat in the minis. Yeah, don't keep them in there if you can help it. But I mean, if you're just walking around in Arizona, like the temperatures there hit 110, 120. Which is why I don't live there. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see where magnetizing would be a superior option in that much, uh, in that kind of heat. Paul, my copy of Hitman 2 came in a camera style case with clasps and some foam trays I could turn into a tray I could oh, wow. that I could turn into a sturdy safe case. That's awesome. Let's see, Shale, my policy is that under no circumstances do I fly with my minis. TSA gets no opportunity to lose and damage my models. Luckily, knock on wood, my experience with TSA, as far as my minis, has only been positive. Like, they freaked out about other things, hilariously missed egregious things, and yeah. then, and then, yeah, like, usually with the minis, and again, knock on wood, because you never know who you're going to get, people have just been like, who, who just thought, have just thought that what was in the case was interesting and cool looking, which is why it's another important reason to paint your minis, folks, because if you just have this, like, sheet of metal or ugly plastic in there that doesn't look like anything, they're not gonna be as nice about it. They're just not. Just saying. They have to be well painted and then they'll be impressed. Oh, just paint it enough to, to know what they are. Hey, Dave Dog, welcome, welcome to the chat. We are talking about traveling with our miniatures, how we do it, why we do it. Are you saying players are screwed? <laughs> I want to love War Machine players. Anyway, Jeff Rockwall. I have entirely too many models to do that, at least for Infinity, my main game. Everything else fits in one bag. Oh, wow. I guess, are you just collecting multiple armies? Because I thought Infinity was one of those that's allegedly a low model count game. Or is it just like it's low model count in the way Malifaux is, in which case you actually need lots of models because you're um, switch, switching them out. Uh, Robotic Dragon, I like meeting people and using different terrain. I'm just not a fan of how ultra competitive the scene is. I'm more casual fun when it comes to gaming. Yeah, that's, that's Everyone kind of- Everyone here is the same way. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why Valhalla is run the way it is. Like the whole point is just game casually, game in that super fun way. And no, I have no issue with like competitive play at all. Like I think it's, it's healthy and important also. It's just, you don't want to do that all the time, especially when you have like some dumb list, right? That you're just like, I don't know, I just want to try this. Like I'd really like not to face like the exact perfect counter list to this every time. I just want to see like how this works. Yeah, like you should be able to do that. So I, I totally get it. Let's see, Jonak, or Jean, 
Um, I had an old, I had an old paperwork cardboard cardboard box with foam. It worked so well. Yeah, I mean, like gaming, the miniature gaming hobby over the last ten years has really like flourished in so many ways because most people had like their um, modified Rubbermaid containers or cardboard boxes that are lined. And then you've got, now you're getting these like fancy cases and battle trays and magnetic trays. And, you know, it's spilled over into like all the 3D printing world too. Like mi miniature wargaming has definitely undergone a lot of technological advancement, probably more in the last 10 years than it did in the previous like 30. Let's see. What I'm hearing is size doesn't matter. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining the chat. How are you doing, my friend? Hmm. Hello, Adeptus Ridiculous. Dave Dog. Uh, battle foam for storage and magnetized minis with shells for transport to clubs. Otherwise, tears before bedtime. That's fair enough. Hello, this is cool. It is cool. I'm sure you're talking about the miniature that Flo's painting. <clears throat> or Chris Bella being here. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Long time no see. I know, I miss your face. Let's see. Um, Jahaziel? I have no idea. I'm probably horribly saying that name, but. See, driving long distances, I keep models in their foam or plastic cases, but covered and insulated from the heat. No direct sunlight, and so if I'm, and if so, I'm blasting the AC. Uh, yes, for sure. And and we're in New Mexico, where the sun will absolutely like incinerate whatever's inside of your car if you are just out in it. Not as bad as Arizona. <laughs> but like significant enough. And you know, we're in Albuquerque, so generally leaving anything that looks stealable in your car is a stupid idea. So there's that too. But, <laughs> right. God. Anyway, um, so yes, <clears throat> I have found for me in my less than super gentle way, I have found foam cases to be preferred. <laughs> Ideal. But the the display trays probably make a lot of sense because if you're just bopping around town and going from the game store and back or something, you just have everything ready to go, it is faster. Well, so. the display cases are good for someone like me who's rather trying to show off the paint job and possibly get commissions, stuff like that. That's true. That's true. Bring up a good point. So the magnet cases, if you're trying to do commission work. Uh, Revik, I guess this is not such a big issue with the UK since we don't tend to fly between cities. We just need to keep them relatively safe while transporting in the car boot, which is the trunk. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Um, yeah sure, that's true. just show off your ability <laughs> to go anywhere in your. <laughs> hey, you drive four hours out of Albuquerque, you'll, pro you'll most likely end up in another state. Try four hours in, like, England, you end up, like, in two other countries. At least one other country. In water. You end up in water. It's true. But still another country. Now, distances are so much smaller. Like, it's, it's weird. But, I mean, here, I mean, Adepticons in Chicago... Uh, LVO's in Las Vegas, Nova's in uh, Virginia. Like, everything is absolutely spaced, way spaced apart. You can go to PAX East, West, or Southwest, and those are in, like, complete opposite parts of the country. It's very, very different. What is it, LVO's the closest to us? And it's 10 hours driving? 10 hours, yeah. If we go to, L well, technically Las Vegas to here is, like, Maybe just under nine hours, but it seemed to take 10 when we went because you're stopping, you're eating, you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> Let's see. Hello, Aldo, Jeff Rockwell. I have like five or six factions and that is low model count because you only need 10 to 15 to play. 
but there's so many to collect and they all do different things. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that makes sense then. So you're always kind of building the list out. And there are other factions. Come on, guys, you're a war gamer. You should know how this works. <laughs> yeah, even, even as much as I love, love, love my Kador, I have multiple factions of War Machine. Or oh, just, just a few, huh? Well, I ended up starting to adopt them because, unfortunately, everyone disappeared. From, so I ended up just adopting a bunch of factions. Let's see. So if you find yourself in Albuquerque and you're looking for a game to play. Hey, Samuel, welcome. Dave Barrett, hi. The coup table was getting pretty intense in the evenings. I can imagine. Oh, coup. <clears throat> oh, yeah, for Valhalla, that's true. Oh, dude, Twilight Imperium. I don't know about that game. <laughs> People get pretty high stakes about that one. Let's see, Games Plus has some decent foam cases. I have several. Okay. Games Plus, is that just its own brand? Because Games Plus kind of sounds like a game store. John, I'm sad from Perth. There's just no War Machine players here. I've started building a Warhammer kill team to get my fix. Mm. I hear ya. Akelis Ron, hello everyone. Chris Bella misses his face as well. Uh, Dub just ridiculous. Not too sure if you're in touch with Warhammer 40k couple. Say hello to them. I miss them so much. With their clear plastic casings too. Oh yeah. Uh, Chris, I like the table war cases. He has, um, has to rolls, carry minis and displaying them. Oh, has two rolls, carrying minis and displaying them. Well, and you're also like one of those phenomenal, amazing painters, Chris. So of course you want everybody, like you'd like to see people, or you'd like to see, see what your work is. And I'm sure everyone else would like to see what your work is inside those cases. So I don't know. Maybe the, mag maybe the magnetic cases are more determined based on how confident you are in your paint job. Jeremy, I've recently started to get Fellhelder cases off Amazon for my skirmish games. They have a cardboard shell and run around 45 bucks. Okay. Let's see. Can confirm the theft issue. Parents had their bike stolen off the back of their truck in the hotel parking lot. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Bikes have bikes being stolen is a problem absolutely everywhere, though. Yeah. Well, I know, like LA was crazy. You just you got like robbed right like in front of you when you were last there. So. I remember we went to CDCon. <laughs> oh yeah, in Atlanta. Gosh, there was like a crime ring at the convention. And I guess they just hit that hotel for every convention that happens there. And they'll just, I don't know, buy a day pass or talk their way in or whatever. And then they were stealing laptops and purses and cameras, and everything they get their hands on. It's crazy. And it's like, I wonder what happens, right? Like somebody steals a case. Cause most of the time you see they like this it. non bath Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, guess that's probably what happened to my purse. That one time my bag that had games in it. Oh, uh, instead of fancy, expensive electronic equipment that they yeah. could pawn. Because I don't know, like, how many, th how many thieves do you suppose have tried to pawn, like, Warhammer armies? Whatever, those are just new Warhammer players now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Let's see, I see the rotating painted piece. Could we see the painting in action? You want to give them a little progress check there, Miss Flo? Sure. Let me just touch up this one little spot real quick. Without having to adjust all of the camera, I'll just swap out the mini to the thing she's working on right now. And you can talk a little bit about what you're, work, uh, what you're doing on it. Well, I'm just working on the base right now. I'm putting in all of the glowing effects little by little. Takes a while. I'm basically having to draw tiny lines. Teeny tiny lines. <clears throat> now I love the glow effect, especially from that blue. I will say that I use my homemade magnetized cases for growing Warhammer Fantasy Battle Lizardman Army. Foam and plastic spears do not mix. Yeah, I understand that one. Have, are you finishing the base or is the base already done on that one? I'm still working <clears throat> on it. It's not done yet. Okay. And then 
Do highlights still need to get added, or what's, what's actually left to do on this guy? Uh, so the model itself is basically done. Like I'm just adding the rest of the bright green, the um, the moot green to the base, and then I was gonna touch it up, and that's it. All right, looking good, looking good. You wanna show off your? Um, not remembering their names, these guys. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, when I finish the bases that I'm working on, I'm gonna start working on these guys' as bases. Hmm. So bases that still need to get worked on, but yeah. still fun dudes. Drive two hours in Australia and you end up in a desert. <laughs> That's actually true here in Albuquerque too, but I understand. Drive two hours in Australia and you end up in a place you don't wanna be. With something undoubtedly poisonous trying <laughs> and trying to kill you. Do you end up back at Burke? Back at Burke, yeah. Let's see. I drive six hours in any direction. I'm in Texas, New Mexico, or Old Mexico. Fair enough. Well, if you're talking about cases, I have my first game case, a waterproof tool and gun case, old school. Yeah, and I suspect that was done primarily for like the real old school war gamers here. Let's see, I think four or five hours drive from me would be Newcastle to London-ish. I don't think it's actually that, well, maybe it's that far to drive, Paul. I, I thought the train took that long. Let's see. <clears throat> May as well traffic, I guess. mic up Tom. <laughs> no? <laughs> Hear his smexy voice. Chris is flirting with you again. Everybody wants, everyone wants a piece of Tommy. Michaelis Ryan. I uh, got a battle foam worm hordes Magnarak. My retribution are safe. But is anybody safe from them? Loving all the YouTube shorts you're putting out, by the way, better than checking the community site. Oh yeah, for Chris Bello, putting out shorts. Nice. <clears throat> May have to copy what you're doing. <laughs> We've been messing around with shorts a little bit, but. Yeah, we put one out just for fun. We are just not fast people. So. Everybody should go look at it. <clears throat> yes, we do have a short, if you wanna see. It is very beautiful, and it's only, it's not 30 seconds, 30 seconds? yeah. 30 seconds of your time, check out my short. Let's see, it's a brand you can get from Miniature Market. I can relate to adopting other factions because nobody else plays anymore in the first place. Yeah. I think it's gonna come back. We just have to wait it out. Uh, Jehazel, not the area, but if I can, not in the area, but if I can, I'll head over there next year. Maybe I'll offer, offer y'all a decent challenge. Let's see, Feldher makes fantastic cases. I have several of their mini plus models and they're perfect for carrying uh, a skirmish army to and from game night. Feldher? I don't even know what that is. I'll copy, copy and Google search that because what are you even talking about? How many game cases are there? Oh, Felder foam, there you go. Yeah, they seem like they've got... An increasing amount, obviously. Well, it's nice, right? Because you know that the market in where gaming is growing. Because now there's all of these other industries that are, that are coming to have a piece of that market share. Because there are enough people who buy miniatures, who need a way of transporting it, who are, you know, wanting to design miniatures or terrain or whatever. Like, I, I, I it's a great time. It's... The best time it's been in miniature or gaming for a lot of reasons. <clears throat> Shell, my bike back in Maine had a perfect anti-theft device. It had no seat or front brakes, shifters that didn't work, warped rims and missing spokes. That bike was not safe at any speed. Nah, I see what you did there. Yeah. There were uh, some people who put a bike together um, then put a video together on YouTube where they put the bike together and held it together with tape and they would watch people go to steal it and then it just fall apart on them. That's pretty funny. Yeah, stuff like that's fun. You get about 10 feet. 
We did not have bikes worth stealing growing up. Does anybody remember the Huffy brand? I can't imagine how many childhood injuries was caused by like Huffy brand bikes. Because not one, but two bicycles I had. Like, which admittedly were probably like fish out of a dumpster or something. Because that was just the type of person my dad was. But like when you'd ride around on your little Huffy bike, one, I kind of dug it because it was a full um, rubber wheel. There was no air in the tire, so it couldn't go flat, which was really good on like New Mexico, dirt and gravel roads, you know, nails and debris or Problem Everything. is, you'd ride around, and if you ever had to lift up on handlebar, the handlebars just came out of the center spoke or the center like post. And yeah, I wiped out many times. Let's see, you found a crafter tool back that box that fits plastic tackle fits plastic tackle box in it works for driving around my menus are tabletop standard though not stressed about it being wrapped around a bit fair enough jeff rockwell so fun story i work for a company that buys sells trays used minis a couple months ago word went around the local game store channels about someone who had their army stolen oh Let's see the rest of the story. We hadn't shared the story on Facebook and someone approached us with a suspiciously familiar army. We reported into the police, of course. I don't know if the army was recovered or not. Oh, I hope so. Like, how satisfying would that be for someone to actually get their stuff back? Like, that never happens. It really doesn't. Let's see. Uh, Jean, someone broke into my car and stole three of the five dollars in coins in the tray. They took some liquor and my D&D &D mug, dice tray, and all my dice. Who steals dice? Well, if Paul was a thief, he'd steal dice, but he's not a thief, so you're, that's a great question. You happen to, oh, it happened to Norn Queen, yeah, I remember. Uh, she had the Tyranid stolen from her car, and then they found it dumped in a dumpster because it didn't have camera or electronic equipment. Let's see, fixing the Iron Kingdom's mini that I just knocked over. Ah, Thomas. Hi, Plunder Den. Welcome. Let's see, Jeremy. I've known a few people whose armies were stolen because we assumed the thief thought the case had electronic camera gun. We found one yeah. of the armies in the trash, but the case was gone. Well, because the case is worth something, even if yeah, that's true. Isn't. It'd just be sad to have to like dig out your minis from like a dumpster. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, Matt. <clears throat> that first year he went to Valhalla, like right before he left. Yeah, that's right. All of those armies were stolen. That was depressing. He never got any of it back. Robotic Dragon, how come you have nothing to paint tonight, Miranda? Because I guess they were distracted hanging out in the chat. And so in order to actually like continue some degree of painting, I just have someone who's good at it on the stream. It's like, I just, <laughs> I do what I do best. I delegate. <laughs> so... As much as I've grown to enjoy miniature painting over the last couple of years, like I, I, I she literally also get enjoys making other people do it. <laughs> hey, man, when you like try to run a business and you are trying to do every single step of absolutely everything, it is like heaven to suddenly just for the exchange of money watch a thing get done for you. It's. <laughs> also the hard part about being you know reasonably competent and enough things you end up having way too much on your back and then you're like yeah I can do this eventually so that's that Chris Bella likes your color scheme thank you uh, Samuel very nice painting there Flo as usual oh thank you oh Flunderden I'm glad you are recovering wow beautiful painting yes Flo is super good um are you still updating your Instagram? I am trying to. I've been neglecting taking pictures. I need to take some pictures. Yeah, I'll have to get some beauty shots of these. I guess once they're done. Well, yeah, and there's that too. Is like, it took a while for me to get the bases for these. So yeah, I now know that the bases are finally getting done, I can start taking photos of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. It's the way to do it. Uh, let's see. Um, Paul, yeah, I have seen that 
episode. Really bad situation. Paul fortunately got the cops. Apprehended the guy? Oh. Uh, Chris, way back in the day, I used old shoe boxes with tissue paper. Tissue paper? Wow. Northeast seems to be doing fine on warm hordes. Northeast. Okay. Yeah. About as far away from me as possible, but that's still pretty good. Although, admittedly, my troll army did come from whatever the game store that was attached to Mini Wargaming in Welland what was at. It was like $100 Canadian or something for this army, and it was painted. And the guy's just like, I don't know, the guy just wanted to get rid of the army. It's like, oh, well, these have to come home with us. <laughs> like, oh, well, <clears throat> my game. Shale, driving two hours won't get me out of Arizona. North Flagstaff, South Tucson, West Yuma, East Sholo. Sholo is the town you drive through on your way to camping, cabins, and skiing. Andrew, I'm one of the few people who would see stealing a pistol case and finding an army inside an upgrade from a pistol. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like you're probably not a thief in general, so. Three-hour train ride to... Newcastle, London, five hours to drive. Oh, I must have inverted it. Oh, well, there you go. So weird. The trains in England are faster than driving. That's not necessarily the case here in the States. When we have interstates, you can go like 85, 90. True. Checking out Miranda's shorts sounds more like oh, OnlyFans content. Oh, shut up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I may have thought that when she said it. Fuba, I sort of hate foam as a way to transport minis. I feel like it still rubs. <sighs> yeah. I mean, if you want a complete no contact solution, the magnet case definitely seems like it is ideal. Well, it is for something that's fiddly like Malifaux, right. especially because. But say, like, heaven forbid, you, you get in, like, there's a collision in your car and you have a battle foam case or a magnet case, or whatever foam case and a magnet case. Like, presumably it does better in the foam, but I don't know. I, I guess, again, if you were to take it onto an airplane, it seems like more of the major sticking point. But the, and, and if you want to go through the trouble of magnetizing your minis, which admittedly is an extra step, but you definitely have a beautiful outcome. All of these are magnetized. Chris Bello, when I was a kid, it was, you had to have a BMX bike for doing sick jumps. Yeah, my brother had one of those, or something equivalent. He did the, the jumps. <clears throat> I was see. just excited when I managed to have a bike for any reason. Aw. Like, they got me a bike <laughs> out here, and because I'm only over here in the summers, they're like, we're going to just give it to your sister so it can get used. Yeah, fair enough. I, since I was one of four kids, my older brother got all the things that were bought, and I got, and everyone else got the things that were found. <laughs> so, let's see, egg cartons are good for small bases. Egg cartons? I hadn't considered yeah. that one. Uh, Dave, don't even go to the, Dave dog, don't even go to the bathroom with your minis out on the table and chain the case of minis to your wrist at all times. Just treat it like a national secret, yeah. Booby trap your mini case with knockout darts. Or just booby trap it with glitter. I'm sure that will work just fine. Ugh, craft hairpiece. Exactly. Stolen, You'll know exactly. who's stolen. Exactly. <laughs> and be very easy to find. Shale, the table where cases have spot for luggage size padlocks. And the windowed cases means no one's under any illusion about its contents. That's a good point. Bill's amazing workflow. Oh, thank you. Uh, those Necrons remind me of Tron Legacy, guys. I can see that. Hmm. Welcome to the chat, Bills. No worries about being late. Although it is 7.15 and Flo's given a progress check. Where, where are you all at? I'd love to see a progress check for anything you are working on. I know uh, someone's working on his... Iron Kingdom's model to repair. But what about anyone else? Some base coating, some 3D model cleanup, some, I don't know, finishing touches, terrain building. What's, what's going on out there, guys? 
Shell, when I moved across town, I didn't have anywhere close to the ne necessary foam, magnets, etc. So I ended up using paper towels for all of my D and D minis. I mean, you use what you have to, you, what you have to. Like, there's no shame in that. It's just nice to have so many options now. Uh, Jeff Rockwell trains fast in the U.S. That's a good one. Tell me another. I know, right? Because we were looking at um, taking Amtrak to like Adepticon next year. Like that sounded like kind of a fun thing because driving it was awful <laughs> and really long. And flying is fine, but it's like so limiting as far as what you can bring. So we talked about taking Amtrak, and it's like a 22-hour, 22-ish hour train ride, but it's about the same amount of time to drive. It's 19 to drive, right? Was it 19? Yeah, maybe it was 19. Is that counting the time that we spend like sleeping in between? Oh, what a miserable drive that was. Oh. Done straight? We've done it straight before, and yeah, that will there never that. happen again. <laughs> never. But, um, but yeah, so it, yeah, I think it's about 22 hours to drive, and that's that is how many miles? 17, 1800 miles, something like that. Let's see, a little bit of wear on a mini ads character, right? That's the spirit. That's, that's the excuse I use when I drop my tape measure on them. Shale, airplane is more about the baggage handler, TSA, being untrustworthy, untrustworthy with people's belongings, which I've also experienced. Flow, I third amendment that flow's a great painter. Just you need a lot of time to do it. Um, Jen, I had a green BMX Huffy. I used to race it, but it was um, so heavy compared to the bikes, to the other bikes, it was nicknamed the Green Machine. Nice. Bill, just paint the minis, put them on in a display case, and never touch them again. It's the only way to be sure. Oh, that's not the point. Robotic Dragon. I was also in that category of older siblings gets everything new. I get the thing handed down or found. Yep. <laughs> I'm used to it. Even being the only girl, like I thought I'd get like more stuff for that. Nope. Didn't mean anything. <laughs> Somehow it worked the opposite <clears throat> way for me. I was the older one. So therefore, I wasn't given anything. It was the new one because the, the younger one because she was the baby. She had to get everything. Yeah, I and don't if know. they had money left over, maybe I was able to do something. <laughs> There's so many weird parental styles out there. Like, you almost I don't know. Uh, Jeff got two base coats on Gaslands car. Nice. Gaslands has always looked like a super fun game. Dave Dog just putting uh, orangey wash onto by yellow orc Wasborn Blastajet. An orangey wash. Okay, like a rusty, like you're doing a rust effect. What? Was boom? Oh, okay. Was boom. Was boom blast a jet. That does sound more orky. Uh, models for kill team. Noise. Everyone's doing some kill team, huh? Well. So, Flo's starting an army, <laughs> which I guess I should just throw out there. I mean, it'll eventually get started. It I mean, will eventually I guess, get started. I guess purchasing it counts as starting one, right? That's yeah. true. That's true. I, um, do you want to tell them what your army is? You are welcome to. So she's totally going to be playing Harlequins, which seemed like the best perfect miniature for her to like get to paint up because she is very artistic and knows all about colors and all that pretty stuff. So. Not to set an unreasonable expectation for what they're gonna look like, because I'm sure whatever she does will be great with them, but I'm looking forward to it, because she almost has a 500 point list now, which is, we're not doing kill team, but we are gonna be doing combat patrol, and so I'm very excited about all these armies we've got that are actually like painted, almost completely painted and ready to go. So Harley Quinn is gonna be one of them, and I'm excited to teach her. I am. What I'm painting now is actually a 500 point Necron list, so. Yes. One at a time, one at a time. 500 points at a time, 500 points at a time. Is that the whole list in that case there? Yeah. That's supposed to be, right? Plus one, plus one, because I used it for, uh, 
referencing where I, what I was doing oh. with the bases before. So it's actually <laughs> it's a, a, a smidge over 500 points. But yeah, the, the case is... It contains the 500 points. Uh, Jahizel, I'm surprised people don't offer tabletop army insurance. I feel like that might be the next thing. War Veggies made some great train chat vids traveling to Valhalla last year. That's right, he took the... You took that. Game Train sounds fun. Like the Orient Express as a gaming event. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, we gotta find more people along the route to pick up as we go. Mm hmm. So that it becomes an adventure. Oh. And, we and then someone has to be murdered, of course, because that's the only way to keep it interesting. Let's see the Plunder Den building jungles and African plains scatter terrain. Nice. Uh, problem with that is qualifying their. Quantifying their value as their unique unique items that are non fungible, as far as even a paint job is concerned. Yeah, you have to like get almost like art insurance or something for it. There's nothing funnier than the expression on the X-ray gun guy's face when he sees drop pots. <laughs> Let's see. I haven't been able to motivate myself to work on anything since the last tournament I played back in January. <clears throat> I did quite bad because of how ultra competitive everybody's army was compared to mine. Oh, just kind of lost interest. I don't find those games fun and it seems to be the norm these days. Went zero and three, two are crushing defeats. Oof, that was a crappy feeling. I'm sorry, man. <clears throat> I mean, that's kind of why we have our own little studio set up here and we play with people who aren't. We've just created our own little bubble, really. But, um, but, I mean, that's always a, I guess that's kind of a risk when you go to the tournament scene, too. And, I mean, there's a certain decorum that people should have, competitive or not. Like, nobody should be being jerks to each other, so. I'm sorry you had that experience. All I can say is, like, don't let that ruin what makes gaming fun for you, because, like, that's, that's such a corner case scenario, really. I mean, there's always going to be reasonable people to play with if you can find them. And nothing stops you from just being able to enjoy, like, the hobby side of it for a while. Like, maybe that's just the way to go. Especially if you're just wanting to start getting back into it. Because I would suggest, if you want to, <clears throat> like, even if you feel like you've lost interest, because you've already invested into these minis, like, read some of the lore, or read, read one of the books for it, or... Or just work on like some, some basic miniature modeling stuff and just see if that kind of rekindles it a bit. Uh, Kith, Uh Hi. I was the oldest and I got hand-me-downs from my dad. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> Samuel just finished Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol and now working on some Tyranid re uh, Ripper Swarms. Ooh, fun. Gaslands is a riot. Vroom, vroom, screech, daka, daka, daka. Now, um, I think it was when we were at Genghis Khan a couple of years ago. It was 2020. It was like the last, the, right before everything happened. And they, they had a whole room for Gaslands. Was it a whole room? Or was it part of the room? Either way, like, they had some cool tables laid out that just, yeah, it's just super fun. Total, like, Mad Max fun. Let's see, Robotic Dragon, I've never had this feeling in my hobby life, and I just don't know how to bring things back. Hmm. Start small. Start insular. Start just with yourself. Reading lore, painting, or messing with a miniature model. Not playing for a while. Bills, I used to transport my minis in an old briefcase. Uh, then as I was getting into my car, the handle decided to separate from the crate, from the case. Much damage, more crying. <laughs> Sucks. Have we had any sort of crazy spills? Like, I've dropped stuff before, but that's just me dropping something or dropping something it's on. mostly on the tabletop. Yeah. But I don't think, like, a case... I don't think there's been, like, a disaster like that. Thank goodness. Let's see. Yeah, like Paul's saying, could try painting a mini or two just because, or just a display rather than a mini that'll be in the game. <clears throat> uh, Adeptus asks, Flo, are you using a circuit board base there? 
Where'd the bases come from? DJ bought a pack of them and they started printing a bunch more. So, yes. <laughs> well, it's a circuit board design. It's not yeah. a circuit board. Right. But she painted it up to look like one, huh? John, I've been spending more time with D&D. &D. I have a charity stream tomorrow, recording our show Sunday and running my own game Monday. Nice. Let's see, Robotic. I did actually buy a director Krennic model today for Star Wars Legion. Maybe I'll bring myself to paint that. I think that would be good. Like, <laughs> if, if nothing else, in just like uh, defiance of what happened in January, like that kind of experience should not put you off something you love. Gotta get back in the saddle by petting the horse first. Troopers for IG replacing hotshot volley guns with World War II MG 42s. Did those things jam a lot? I don't know about the hotshot volley guns though. They seem, I mean, are you gonna keep the same? I assume you'll keep the same rules. The hotshots have way better rules. Let's see, Jeff Rockwell, Gaslands has a rule called the rule of carnage. If there is a disagreement in the rules, you don't, you don't roll dice or something like other games. You go with whichever option causes the most carnage. <gasps> Mandragora, hi. Wish I could stick around and talk progress, but I am between rushing events. Have a good one. Thanks for popping by. You take care. Let's see, Adeptus. Uh, working on apothecary attack armored transport vehicle with land speeder on board as a pickup truck speeder truck unit. Uh, and this for all types of games, Cyberpunk, 40K, Battletech, etc. Nice. Um, now that I have weekends off, yay, congratulations, Thomas. I plan to run some Requiem games. Very cool. Uh, Andrew, you're working on my step count, then work. Your step count, like physical walking steps? <laughs> well, staying fit is also a huge and valuable part of, of well, being human, and then thus enjoying all the rest of the stuff. <gasps> we would know. <clears throat> we would know. Try to stay pretty active. So yeah, I, I don't know. Say, stay very active. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you, stay, you stay very active for sure. So yes, I'll be heading to LA next week. And even though my weekend may end up being super full with social engagements, I still want to kind of bring something with me just in case. Then we're going to visit Chung. And we're going to see Chung, if you, any of you remember from Wargamers Consortium. I'm super excited to actually get to visit with him. If you check out his channel now, he's totally into aquariums, which is a little bit bigger hobby market than like miniature wargaming as it turns out, but you know, he still, he still knows the game, he plays. So looking forward to hanging out with him. The, the Dead Zone, I'm painting some 3D printed minis for Frostgrave, just got into the game and it's super fun so far. Oh, thanks for posting those, Adeptus. Uh, yeah, I, Osprey Games, I believe. Yeah, I have not tried Frostgrave yet, but everybody I know is has really enjoyed it. And I think they started coming out with their own minis. Or are you just using um, some proxy minis for that, um, the dead zone? So the question becomes, do I bring a 500 point 40K list? Or do I bring like a 50 point war machine list? I miss the war machine battle reports. Kara of the butcher, oh, I know. But I have good news for you. As of last night, because I'm trying to get this done before we head out as well. We actually have Space Hulk in editing, episode three, which is kind of hilarious because right before the stream started, I noticed a comment come in on my channel where someone was like, you never made more of these. And I was like, I'm literally editing the next one right now. But why would you know that? That was like three years ago, so um, well, yeah. It should be out this weekend. The, the goal is that it should be out this weekend. Like We are going to try to get that out before we go. And if they want to help us, you have to click on the thumbnail the first time you see it. That's true. Basically, so um, the YouTube algorithm hides stuff on average. So um, I will tell you in just a second, Chris. Um, so basically, like, if I put out a, a battle report video at this point, it's only going to show it to, like, some small percentage of subscribers. And depending on how they respond to the video, like, clicking on it immediately or not, 
uh, it will or won't show it to more people. So it would be super helpful if you clicked it right away when you see the next Space Hulk Mission 3 battle report come up. Uh, I can't tell you the day yet because we're literally still editing it and I don't want to make a false promise. So, but that's kind of the way that works. And so it gets a much bigger reach if people are clicking on it right away. Uh, Chris, I am going to LA because I'm actually in a feature film. So, yeah. <clears throat> so since we're going to be out there for that, um, we may get to check out like a local game store or something over the weekend, but I'm actually working uh, as soon as I get there. So it'll be, it'll be a busy day. <laughs> Let's see, Jeremy, did you see the art for the new Kador work? Oh my god, why are you showing that to me right now? That is wigging me out. Get that away from me. You just showed me a dead centipede, which are like yeah. the worst. The worst. New Kador Warcaster, what are you talking about? Has that come out this week? Kador Warcaster. What are you talking about? I don't know. I want to know. Uh, but no, I have not seen it, Jeremy. <clears throat> I'm here to find out about Space Hulk this weekend. Can't wait. It should be no later than this weekend, because obviously we won't be able to stay that after that. But yes, Space Hulk Mission 3 is on its way out, and it's probably the most beautifully shot one that we've done so far. Like, Space Hulk, we kind of get to lean into a lot of the um, visuals. And, I don't know, I think it looks great. So, I look forward to showing it to you. But it's literally happening. It's actually on the editing timeline. It's happening. <laughs> Let's see, Andrew Fairbanks, I should just hang around Warhammer World with minis waiting, for a waiting to challenge Cav uh, Henry Cavill. He seems polite. He might, he might let you do that. Let's see, finished painting Von Oberyn mini from the original Witchfire trilogy, Wima. Uh, Jeff, YouTube sucks. Yes. <laughs> it's like that friend who used to be cool and then got a corporate job and now doesn't do anything but talk about marketing strategies and quarterly profits. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, hit a little home for you. Let's see. Space Hulk, bring it on. What movie can you say? Yes, the movie, movie is called Craving. It is a creature feature horror flick. And it's just, a, I mean, it's an independent movie, but it's legitimate. And the guy who's directing it has made a bunch of movies. He has a YouTube channel, uh, Jay Horton. Um, and so, and I've followed his stuff for a while. So this will be kind of like a fun experience of officially getting to meet him and be part of the project and all of that. Um, but I think the estimated time the movie will be out is sometime at the end of the year. I feel like Chris would know who Felissa <clears throat> Rose is. Oh yeah, so did you ever see Sleepaway Camp, Chris? It's Felissa Rose, who is like the main girl from Sleepaway Camp. She's actually going to be in that. Um, and there's also, was it Christopher Plummer? And um, Bill Obrisk Jr. Oberst Jr. Let's see. Yes, but if we click immediately, we might bring more weirdos into this chat. <laughs> Thomas. Post pics so we can see. Jeremy, um, <clears throat> it was put out with the Primecast. I'll send it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check it out. Still needs to be flocked. Let me see. Still needs to be flocked and sealed. Do I need to take it and put it on the little turntable? <laughs> oh, God. He's long dead. He's like dry, crispy. No, I don't want to. I don't want it anywhere within like ten feet of me. It was already just like, I was struggling. Okay, so we've got like a woodsman dude wearing a pelt, model pose. Is a sniper? Ooh, all right, well, freaking sniper warcaster! Finally, I've only been wanting that for the last ten years. All right, fine. I'm pretty excited now. All right, I'll have to take a look at that more. <clears throat> so apparently, there's a new cater. Well, Kara Sloan is the wrong faction. Unless she feels like switching teams, I'm not likely to play her. I feel like she did <laughs> I was like waiting for you to make some stupid joke about it. <laughs> um, 
Kator has needed a sniper or a caster for years, so this is completely appropriate. I was hoping it'd be a chick, but all right, fine. I'll deal with Chunky Dude. It's fine. Um, let's see, more beautiful, sweet episode, or more beautiful episode, sweet. Is Dylan still around to be your opponent? Actually, Flo's my opponent in this one. <clears throat> I'll drop Miranda's vid about the movie in the movie section of your Discord. Oh, thank you, Paul. Jean Arc, have you ever played Mothership? It's like the movie Alien, and it's amazing. I have not, but it sounds amazing. Uh, and that's kind of what Space Hulk does too, though, so I wonder if it'd be very similar. I have seen it. Damn, the movie scared me when I was a kid. <laughs> what was Flo's reaction to Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> it didn't age well, it turns out. No, I... And she's like a horror, you know, aficionado. Christopher Plummer. No, I'm totally saying to, the wrong to say word. The least. I'm totally saying the wrong name. It's who's the other guy in Craving? Let's see. We need signed headshots. I don't know about that. It's not Christopher Plummer. It's um, I don't remember his name. Let's see. The new Iron Kingdoms minis for Cricks look amazing. I can't wait for those. Yes, yeah, Sloan did switch teams. Ha, 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 ha. But uh, Sloan is not Kator, so new dude. Should be pretty good, should be pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'll have to share that picture on like Facebook or something. Looks, it looks interesting. It looks interesting indeed. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I need to remember the name. this guy's name. It's driving me nuts now, so I've got to I've got to fix okay. this. The other so it's Felissa Rose. Oh, that's right. It's Plumbers, the guy who was in um, Showgirls. Yeah, the guy from Showgirls, but I I can't just say the guy from Showgirls. So I'm trying to remember and you know, 5G moves just so fast these days. Thanks. <laughs> so let's see, craving. We've got cast, cast. Glenn, Glenn Plummer. These first names are getting me. <laughs> Glenn Plummer is the other guy in it. So like it has named people in it. Let's see, did your co-host paint the minis on the screen? Hella awesome. Yes, so yes. Flo is the painter, the She's professional. The painter she is the painter, Flo. <laughs> she is the professional who makes all of these look amazing. And they showed the new Signar. I should probably listen to this Primecast, shouldn't I? I've been a little distracted. There was a guy in Showgirls. <laughs> oh. That, that movie. Oh, Chrissy needs to hang out and do a movie chat with you again. I know. When are we going to do another movie chat, Chris? I miss you. I'm talking about movies. Even though you and, and Adam were too good to go to the theaters. So we're all like talking about old movies, and I'm like, what about this one? Not that you're missing anything. The new yeah. Doctor Strange was a mess, so. At least not lately. Not oh, uh, Cursed? cursed? The curse. the curse. Okay, so there's two movies that I think are like the best movies for 2022 so far. And the first one is The Cursed, yeah, which we saw in February, I want to say. And it's a horror flick from the same people who did Bitch, The Bitch, I want to say. Uh, I think it was the same producers or something. Yeah. And or it's, a werewolf. it's, yeah, it's a werewolf movie. And it's actually like told in an interesting way. The cinematography is just gorgeous. And it's a full story. Like you kind of just, you, you, you get an actual full story out of it, which is more than I can say you're getting out of most movies anymore. And then the other one, which I think I liked more than everyone else is the outfit. Yeah. Which has the guy from Bridge of Spies in it. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's super good in it. And it's just this very, I just call it a very neat and tidy movie because it's just so well crafted and it's like precisely done. And you know, it was just really satisfying to watch as like a complete well thought out movie. Well, what is it, a single location with three rooms? 
Yeah, I don't think he ever. I don't think you ever leave that area. It almost, yeah, like, and despite it being a limited location, you don't feel bored in in it. Uh, it's about this. There's lots of action. There's lots of action. Yeah, there you follow this guy who's like a, a tailor or cutter. This whole explained in in Chicago in like the 1940s, 30s was it 30s, and one of his biggest clients is in the mafia, and he has to deal with all of that all that that entails and try to protect people he loves. And it's just, it's amazing. And it's one of the best movies I've seen in a long, long time. So I highly recommend the outfit. Oh, Erotic Dragon, the outfit was a great movie. Thank you. You're totally right. Just, ah, oh, loved it. Chris Bellow's got it. So pumped for Top Gun. I'm watching it in IMAX. Okay, yes, I agree. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm totally taking my dad to see it because Planes, right? Like he, he he flew planes, and so he can appreciate that. And it's Top Gun. Like I don't even care. It could be almost about anything, and I think I'm gonna be happy with it. It's just one of those movies where I'm like, I think it knows what it is enough. It's like when I go see Fast and Furious anymore, where I'm like, I know I'm seeing like a superhero movie. It's not. This isn't real life. So and they know that now. So they can just be funny and have fun with it and do whatever. And, and I've enjoyed those movies since like five. And doesn't take itself too seriously. And as long as Top Gun doesn't take itself too seriously, I feel like I will every, very much enjoy it. Uh, yes, he's her dance instructor, yes. So did Flo play the Blood Angel, paint the Blood Angel minis in Space Hulk? Those have been an inspiration for years. Who painted those? Both we both did. did. We, held, we both worked on them. Yeah. So that was much earlier in for you on yes. the painting side. So Tommy actually and painted quite a bit. Just paint Gene he did all the base coats. Definitely. Uh, he did helpful. some of the base coats. I did most of them. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. New Warcaster too. She looks sick. Sweet. Um, can you play double teams in War Machine? Not that I. There's teams tournaments, but. Yeah. You are still one on one, I thought. No, you do play no, the two. I think it's two, you, two. There's a rule set for it. I don't remember the the um, there being tournaments for it. Let's see. I like the new Doctor Strange, but most of Marvel movies are so sames. This new movie was a nice break from the usual. See, I felt like it was more of the same still. Like Doctor Strange is not who he was in the first movie, and yes, there's character growth, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, Chris, it turned out from the Fast and Furious movies after the first one, it was a remake of Point Break. Almost beat for beat. Fair enough. Point Break, actually, pretty solid movie. Oh my god, Glenn Plummer, interesting, yes. New Predator this year, I'm not optimistic. Oh, is that Prey? Is that the one you were yeah. telling me about? I don't know how I feel about that. I hated the last one. Like, I think just angrily hated. And I don't even care about Predator particularly. That's like, one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, but I don't know, fine. Like, I'm pretty much familiar, I'm just used to it. Like, Alien was one of the best movies in my childhood growing up, and I'm just used to that franchise having just been like kicked and burned and pissed on and kicked again and ran through a Miller, like. Run over by a bus. Run over, the yeah, bus. just. Then the bus decided to back up. <laughs> just just beaten, over. beaten over and over and over. And I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. I kind of feel that way about Jurassic Park. I know a lot of people like like the new movies, but even with this new one that's coming out, I'm like, well, okay, first, I get the. The first new one was fun. Jurassic World was, was fun, stupid. but it, the second one was really stupid, yes. There's a lot of problems, There's a lot of problems with it. I mean, a lot of people felt that way about the second movie, too. The second Jurassic Park movie. Jurassic Park, The Lost World, yeah, that was, it wasn't as bad, but it was kind of a change because they went into more of a monster movie direction. Three was actually kind of, was three the one that was decent? No, three. I think three Wait. was, yeah. Oh, that's three is the one where they went back. Two is the one with, uh... With Vince Mothal Vaughn Mothal getting Mothal and Mothal 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 <laughs> killing everyone, <laughs> Vince Vaughn getting everyone killed. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen Amber that. Ray. What was her name? Amber Julie, 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 Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Let's see. I have heard people 
They're very hard split about the new Doctor Strange movie. I agree that all their movies are the same. Uh, the Northman is a gorgeous movie, maybe a little slow. So the the Northman is it's it's quite solid. It's just yeah, I guess maybe a little slow. It does seem like it runs a little long, um, but it's it's fine. It is a very simple story, and that's fine. And I I appreciated it more after I got home and I was watching reviews about it, and one of them was talking about how incredibly historically accurate it was, which in retrospect did make me appreciate the movie more, like that it would be more accurate to the time. It was more of, um, you know, it was actually kind of informative in that way. So that was pretty cool. Well, stuff that just seemed pointlessly weird <laughs> not to actually have like a, you know, a good reason. A valid for reason there. for being there. Yeah. Let's see, Jeff. If anyone had experience with Brawl Machine, my shop is going to be starting Warm Horse Community, and we're thinking of starting with that just to ease everyone back in. You know what? Actually, that's what we're going to be doing here is, um, is Brawl Machine, I think, at this point. Like, the rules are not different particularly. There's just limited models and FA1 with some exceptions. And I agree 100%. Like, ease people in that way. It is way better than a slow grow league, and and you're not going to see the same, let's just say, negative play experiences that you're going to get in full games. And so I think Brawl Machine is probably the best way right now to rekindling a community. <clears throat> Chris Bello, Doctor Strange had Sam Raimi. I know, and I had Bruce Campbell, and I love these people. But, you know... Mm -hmm can't just depend on that though. Yeah. Nice and and Sam Raimi, he's only going to have so much control over something as big as a Marvel yeah. flick. So you can see some elements of his stuff in there, but I mean, they're not his decisions being made. That movie is a freaking mess from uh, from a story perspective. Uh Achilles Rain, Brawl Machine is great to start with. Prey looks interesting, but our the monster movie, let's see, but they are monster movies, not Shakespeare. Yeah, but Predator was still a damn good movie, like philosophically speaking, regardless of being a monster flick. Aliens was an amazing monster movie, philosophically, even outside of a month, like it being a monster flick. That is such a hand wave or excuse. Like, I hate that anybody would use that excuse to pour millions of dollars into a movie and not bother with something because you feel like that genre is beneath you. Like, there are amazing sci fi's out there and monster movies because it turns out a story transcends a genre easily. I uh, heard that they had to reshoot tons of Doctor Strange. They had America way too bratty, and, Doc and Doctor Strange was essentially a side character. Yeah, I had heard about that as well. And, I mean, it's probably good that they tried to make her more endearing, and it didn't necessarily stop Doctor Strange from taking more backseat than he should have. It was a very similar problem in Black Widow, honestly. Like, Black Widow was very much a side character in her own movie. Let's see, 100% agree. I'm sick of everything being ruined with lazy storytelling and cheap mem member this fan service moments. Well, yeah, you just, and, and not, I mean, there's plenty of people who are happy with it and that's fine. It's just, I get tired of it. Cause I have lots of friends who are like, no, it's just, it's Marvel. I got to see the thing I want. It's like, that's fine. You probably should not try to defend the story to me then. Like if you're just gonna say I have no standard, <laughs> like that's fine. But don't tell me how I have to like something. Well, if they had a coworker who earned that much money and was that incompetent at their job. Oh yeah, no, like, nobody would be happy with that. Exactly. But they always give screen screenwriters a hand wave. Yeah. Patrick, I like Brawl Machine. There's four player format. I was seeing some people play with, have, and have more fun with. Yeah. No, and Brawl Machine is is kind of brilliantly done in reading through the rules, like. You don't have to make any significant changes. It's not got the company of iron problem where it's quasi similar rule set, but different enough and you have to keep track of all these different things. I mean, it, they did a great job. So. Aliens was a great sequel though, in my opinion. It was a great sequel. It was also just a great, a great movie. And Alien was also a great movie with strong allegory to it. Let's see, yep, Top Gun 2, long awaited. Achilles Rain, Malorian created the four player FFA Commandant. Okay. 
Uh, Jeff Rockwell, most of us who work there play warm hearts at some point in the past, but the community in uh, PDX area has, hasn't been so strong. Uh, so we're all a little rusty. Haven't really played much since Lock and Load 2016. Oh yeah, Brawl Machine, 100%. That's what I'm gonna be getting back into. Uh, did you get back to watching the rest of The Rock? I did. <clears throat> so I hadn't seen The Rock because one of the movies I saw was the, the unbearable weight of massive talent with Nicolas Cage in it, and I realized in watching that movie how few of his movies I had actually ended up seeing. So we got home that night, but I had this awful headache, and we, wa we started watching The Rock, and we had to stop it during the San Francisco chase scene because it was making me car sick, like I was getting motion sickness from it. I blame the headache because I've literally never heard a movie do that to me before. But we ended up finishing it the next day. And, you know, it's fine. Um, it's kind of funny because when you watch that movie, you feel like you're in a video game. But in the 90s, that wasn't necessarily, like, the idea, I guess. Like, you, you don't feel it the way you do in a movie now where you're like, oh, and this is this scene, and I guess here's this thing that we're well, doing now. Not that many people played video games. That's true, and so not that many people would have pegged it for it. But like the whole minecart scene under Alcatraz, you're like, what is this? Like, really? Come on. And then like later on, it's like, no, there really is a mine shaft underneath Alcatraz. And you're like, oh, well, I'll just sit down, I guess. <clears throat> now, whether or not Michael Bay knew that, yeah. Robotic Dragon, I'm going to head out. It's been a slice, but it's going to rain soon. I'm going to get a run in before that. Bye, Robotic Dragon. Appreciate Bye -bye. you hanging out. Mag Attack. Unfortunately, Doctor Strange is Disney, and I am done with them and all of their products. And they've abused, as they have abused me as a Star Wars fan for the last time. Dude, I, all the respect in the world for that. I don't blame you at all. Yeah, I'm kind of disenchanted so far with Disney. I I'm as it goes. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't even seen. The Eternals? Is that what they're called? Is that the the Eternals? Oh, I did watch that. I didn't see that. I haven't watched What If. I haven't watched Hawkeye. Like, I just got really tired of all of all of the stuff, and I have things to do. That's all we watched was Wandavision and Wandavision, Loki, and blah, 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 the other one, Captain America, Falcon. The Fa Falcon and Winter Soldier. The Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Gone. Terrible. That was. It was unpleasant. <laughs> Jeremy, I used to love War Machine, then it, then it got big, too big for its britches, but War, Brawl Machine's awesome. It brings back the feels it had before. Oh, I'm really excited to hear that, Jeremy. It's nice to hear you feel that way, honestly. Uh, Chris, but those are old movies you're talking about. What newish movie is the same level as Alien or Predator? As a monster movie? The Cursed is decent, but it's it's not gonna exactly. be yeah it's it's not up there with that, but it's it's decent um, as far as a creature flick and what the last even ten years I feel like there's got to be something Trick or Treat did a pretty good job it's not quite creaturey um, Krampus. Krampus was solid Krampus Krampus, Krampus. Krampus I'm like wait 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 it. last ten years Krampus <laughs> <laughs> there you go Krampus that's your answer Chris. Thomas, I want to try Brawl Machine. It would let me dabble in other factions for fun. Yes, it would. And you also have much faster games. Uh, third Jurassic Pork Park Pork. Pork. <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> Pork. <laughs> what is insane, like Gory? Right <laughs> oh my gosh, James Bond. No time to die. I had a ton of reshoots. Um, as Bond was a side character, and it was all Lashana Lynch. Yeah, No Time to Die was was okay. It's also like an almost three-hour movie whole. Patrick, I think I like Company of Iron more than Brawl Machine, but it's very unfortunate uh, support for it died with no quarter. I know. But they also started letting it get bloated way too early. They're like, well, you can have Saw more jacks. You can have Light War jacks. Well, you can have... Um, they changed something else in it where I'm like... Now you have to have all the new quarters to keep up with the rules, to know what's going on, and from a support standpoint, yeah, it just it wasn't making a lot of sense. And then it has its own proprietary, like, 30 by 30 mat. It was, like, Brawl Machine makes a lot of sense. It's honestly how I feel about Kill Team now, too, where I'm like, screw it, I'll just play Combat Patrol, like, small games of 40K. I don't want to learn, like, 14 rule sets to play a few games. 
Let's see. I enjoyed Company of Iron. Playing with Oz at the cons was great. I still have my fun Company of Iron uh, Christmas special on the channel. That was pretty fun. Jeremy, I would probably like Company of Iron more if it wasn't so hard to kill opponent miniatures. Yeah. It makes the game feel like it drags a bit. Yeah, there was that. You didn't miss much with Eternals, figured. I wanted to try Company of Iron, but it came out after I moved out from the privateer press hobby. Mm. I mean, it's fine. Um, Honestly, like, as far as just getting back in, and it's not straight miniature, but it's a board game, I, feel, I still think Undercity is super fun. Uh, Jeremy, I actually enjoyed Hawkeye the most out of all the Disney Plus movies. Okay. A Quiet Place. Hmm. A lot of people liked A Quiet Place, and I guess it is a creature flick. Do you think it's yeah. up there? I think most people liked it more than I did. Yeah, yeah. I... I kept being that well actually guy where I'm like this doesn't really no sound what you can be by a waterfall why don't you just live there and like there were a lot of frustrating problems which admittedly I also had in Doctor Strange um, predator and alien didn't have. which yeah predator and alien didn't have it's all explained uh, video games in the 90s were 8-bit or 16-bit resolution yes but it's like the levels like this is you know when you're playing in Spider-Man you're running around like the city and then you're in the sewers and then you're you know, in this, in a lab or whatever, like that, that's what I meant. Jurassic Porkies, yeah, I went there, yes, thank you for that Mac attack. Patrick, the Babadook did a pretty good job. That's right, the yeah. Babadook was solid. That's a good, that's a good point, Patrick. I like that one too. Also, very allegorical. Is that one like a creature feature though? I don't know. Um, it's more paranormal. I mean, there is a Babadook. There is, yeah, with the Babadook. I would. It kind of falls It's not as thing, much like as Krampus, out. but... It's in it almost as yeah. much as the uh, alien in the first alien. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. He's more paranormal, you know? Like... Yeah. That's true. Oh, I guess... I mean, Krampus is too, right? No, Krampus is... Krampus is physically there. But it's still paranormal? Yeah. It's, it's mythological, feature. actually, arguably, but... Jeff Rockwell, having recently, six months or so, quit 40K again, I have to say I'd enjoy Combat Patrol more if it were played on a full size or at least four by four board. It just feels unbalanced. Uh, as someone who had to fight against Tau, I would agree with you. But I guess there's nothing stopping you from just putting it on a bigger board. I had complained about the new kill team having so much material, but I've never liked it since the new edition. So much good and so much weird. Yeah. But after getting... Uh, Table turn one by a guy with a battle wagon full of orcs. It was a lot less entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, they should consider just bringing back Company of Iron relatively close to what they had back then. Uh, figure a way to drop the cards for dice mechanic like Warcry. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, the cards aren't a bad call. Let's see. I liked A Quiet Place because of Jim. <laughs> Jim from The Office. I wasn't a fan of A Quiet Place. Doctor Strange uh, should have had the audience go watch What If first. Might have helped. Uh, probably more WandaVision, but yeah. I mean, What If I mean, got covered. Sort of, cover sort of yeah. Half the stuff they introduced in WandaVision, they just ignored in the movie. Edge of Tomorrow was pretty good. Bill Paxton is great in that movie. Mm, rest his soul. Uh, I heard seeing What If and WandaVision was kind of needed for Doctor Strange, and I've seen neither. We did not see What If, but all that would do is just explain the scenes that are pretty obvious in the movie anyway, so I don't know that What If would have really made much of a difference. I loved Dark Star, Dark Star. Bomb. <laughs> Get back in the bay. <laughs> All right, guys, well, it is 8 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Do you want to do a final um, status on your miniature there, Miss Flo? Yeah. So that's where she's ended out. Uh, base is almost done. Another set of frightening monsters for a 500-point kill team list getting ready to go. Uh, don't forget, we should have a Space Hulk battle report coming out this weekend for realsies. 
And the next time I talk to you all will be after we get back from LA. So I'll have some stories for you, I'm sure. Remember to click on the thumbnail as soon as they see it. Yes, and do click on the thumbnail for Space Hook as soon as you see it. It does make a difference because you've got to tell YouTube how to do its job. And if you do that, I would be very much grateful for it. You don't have to finish even watching it. Just, just click on it. Just click on it. So, anyway. Quickity click. You all have a wonderful night. Happy hobbying. Stay safe out there. Stay sane. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.